Hey, this is Brendan Small from Death Clock, and you're watching Heavy Consequence. So starting off, I just have to give the biggest ups for the workload, because not only are you back with a movie yeah. and a soundtrack and an album, yeah, but you're all here playing shows. I know, it's so crazy. So what has the, like, I have to imagine that took, I mean, how, how long to just pull all this together to have this moment of just Death Clock? This started probably like two and a half years ago, um, but it really kind of started in 2019 where uh, Adult Swim asked us to come back and headline one of their festivals. So it, it really meant getting the band back together, waking up my hands, waking up my right arm for rhythm guitar playing and all that stuff, and um, and just waking up like the whole world out of like a cryogenic freezing chamber. Like in the beginning of Alien, you know, when everybody wakes up and they're all groggy and they're like sitting on the side of their bed and they don't know which way is up. That's kind of how it was. This is also like kind of going back to high school, but being a little bit more wise about everything, having a little bit more of a thousand yard kind of like overview of the whole thing and, and doing high school better a second time. So it started back then and then 2019 kicked open a door and then around 2020, was when this offer came in to get this ready. So I knew that it was looking like it was going to be, a, it was going to work out. And I knew, I knew I had to start like, I knew what the story was because I, I knew it from a, for a long time ago what the Army of the Doomstar movie was going to be. I just had to kind of get back into it. I had to get the writing process started and I had to get the record started at the same time. And while I'm thinking about the record, I'm also thinking, what does the score sound like? What are the themes of this thing? So it's all kind of like, it's almost like the way I look at it is like you're in a, a you're in a kitchen and you know you slow cook the, the beef for a long time and then you in the meantime you get this ready and that ready and then you finally flash fry some of the stuff at the very end and you serve all the food up at the same time so that's kind of what it feels like so everything's kind of inching along but I'm on like a like a turnstile just kind of like like you know on a lazy Susan just moving around from department to, dep to department but Honestly, it's how I like to do things. I like I like a good challenge. I like doing a lot of stuff at once, and it's a good brain puzzle. And so is touring. Touring is a really great brain puzzle because I got a lot of stuff to do on the guitar side, and I got a lot of stuff to do on the vocal side, and I got to switch pedals and kind of negotiate a lot of stuff. So to me, it's like uh, it keeps me it keeps me busy, and so it's helpful. Yeah, yeah. And I love a good food metaphor. So you just knock yeah, it out of yeah, the yeah. Right but it, I, yeah, that kitchen thing I think yeah. comes in the handy. To, to, to describe what it is but it is a lot of stuff at once but I really like you know whatever it is like whatever ADD OCD kind of cocktail that I have that got me interested in guitar in the first place because it, it's you know it's you're sitting there it's granular you're sitting there like working in millimeters and working with a metronome and all that stuff and it's part of my brain likes all that stuff it's calming to me same with directing animation same with doing voices same with writing it's all kind of a different version of the same thing so I like telling big stories, and I like to pack it full of stuff. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and, and speaking of the story, I want to zoom in a little bit on Army of Doomstar. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to ask you to spoil anything. Yeah. Um, but how does the story kind of pick up from where it left off? Are, are mm -hmm. there, is it similar themes? Are we taking any crazy left turns? Any, any teases at all? This is really like the culmination of the series, from the first episode to the last episode. From the first words that are spoken in the very first episode to to where we land. This this picks up right after the Doomstar Requiem, which is an hour-long rock opera special that we did with a 50-piece orchestra and everything. And this picks up directly afterwards. In fact, we've moved the needle forward, uh, behind just a little bit, like a couple hours before that thing finishes, and we kind of really see what happened at the end of the Doomstar Requiem. And we realize our lead character, Nathan Explosion, is kind of in a flat spin emotionally, uh, professionally, and uh, just not doing so hot while he's given the ultimate task, which is a creative task, to write a song that may or may not save the world from this thing that's been building throughout the entire series, the Metalocalypse. And uh, can he do it? What is it like to be an artist under uh, uh, creative, under emotional duress, and while the stakes couldn't be higher for the world potentially end ending? Will he do it? Won't he do it? Um, that's kind of what, that's what the show really is about. That's yeah. what the movie is about, yeah. Yeah, and I know Death of the Artist and all that, but as somebody who puts a lot of themselves into art and spends a lot of their just time into art, um, I'm starting to pick up maybe some some themes you might be throwing in yourself that, uh, yeah, just going on tour and, and mm -hmm. making some songs that probably will save this world, too. <laughs> I don't know about that, but you know what's crazy is being on this tour with Baby Metal, who is really, 
I'm so happy to be on tour with them. I really, I think they're also kind of doing what we're doing. They really put a lot of work into their show. Um, their their uh, creative director, Kay Koba, is, is a person I'm really fascinated with because he built this whole thing too. But he's got a really amazing rhythm section that is so tight, so great. The girls are um, completely lovable. They're so charming. They're wonderful. I can't, I smile every time I see them perform. And our camps are just so excited to be around each other. And Jason Richardson on guitar, who opens up the whole show, he is, a, such, he is really a go-getter too. He really, really is got a big brain and is just real shredder. He's, he's great. So this whole thing has been really fun. To me, this is vacation. I've done all this work, and now I get to go see and meet people who have a relationship with the show. Because the show, when it, when it um, initially aired, these kids are like 15, 16 years old, 14, you know, that kind of crucial time when you're defining yourself with the music you're choosing, you know. It's a really important time. It was for me, at least. And now they're in their early 30s, and I can see that this was their introduction to heavier music, which to me is really great, because I know that if I didn't have my buddy, who's actually here with me on this show, that kind of got me into guitar, I invited him out on the road to say, like, look, this is what happened. You know, this is, this is the end result of all this stuff when we were kids in junior high and you were showing me Black Sabbath riffs, you know? So um, I, if I didn't have my buddy, I don't know what I would be, I don't know who I would be, you know? And, um, and I know that this show kind of is that for some other people. So it feels nice to, to be able to go and meet people and see how the show has affected them. Yeah, yeah. No, and, that's, and, and I was going to ask, I'm glad you touched on it, because when I saw the bill for Baby Metal Death Clock, I, it's something that I never would have come up with, but as yeah. soon as I saw it, I was like, yeah, somehow that makes perfect sense. You know, it was pitched to me. Um, um, my booking agent, Aaron Dixon is pals with uh, Baby Metal's manager, as it turns out. But he pitched it to me, and he was just like, "Hey, listen, think about this." And I immediately I thought I, I thought this is a really good co-headlining tour for a lot of reasons. One being that we're both theatrical and bombastic, and we're also using very extreme metal to kind of do something that hasn't that I haven't really seen that much. But I also love that about heavy metal. I love theatrical heavy metal. I love King Diamond. I love Iron Maiden. The theatricality of Iron Maiden, what they bring to a show, is so so much larger than life than any other genre of music has ever done. Who's ever been as big as, as what Iron Maiden's done in any other genre, from indie rock to anything? Can you think of anybody? I can't. Um, but uh, but uh, this pairing made a lot of sense. To me, it's like an evening of spectacular entertainment, really, like a Las Vegas style, like Live at Caesars Palace, Death Clock and Baby Metal, you know? It makes a lot of sense, and, and our audiences are sticking around for each other. They, It's really cool. There's like a cross-pollination that I was hoping would happen, because, like I said, I watched, I watched Baby Metal, and they play Gimme Chocolate, and I can't, I almost start crying I'm so happy watching it. It's so funny, it's so emotional. It's great, it's really cool.